Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about some of the common issues that come up with the Bosch electric bike motor system and quick ways to solve them. So we'll be walking through some of the different things that we encounter over time, whether it's related to the display or the motor, etc. And just really quick ways to figure out what's going on and what to do from there. So let's get into it. So one of the most common issues that people encounter is they go to turn the bike on and it doesn't actually go on. So if I hit the power button here, the display turns on, but the bike is actually not on. Now I can tell this because I don't see the 0.0, .0 miles per hour or kilometers per hour, however you have it set. And that would give me the indication that this display is not communicating with the bike. Now the display on its own has its own internal battery. So as you can see, it can turn on on its own, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the bike is on. Now this issue that I just created was res related to the display not being fully seated on the bike. If I put the display onto the bike and fully seat it, you can see that it'll actually turn on. So you can tell it says performance line CX, you have this 0.0, .0 miles per hour. This is really the best indicator to tell you that the bike is on, the display is connected to the bike. Again, this will happen on the Intuvia display as well as the smaller uh, Kiox display. But on the Purion, uh, since it's not, uh, it doesn't have that special connection, uh, you're, you're not gonna have that issue. Now you might have this issue because the display is not fully seated on here, but you might also encounter this issue because these contacts here are not clean. So it could be here on the display or quite often more than likely it's, it's here on the display mount or display holder. If these get corroded somehow, uh, what can happen is this, these are really, um, they're pretty sensitive electronics, so they require a constant connection, and if, if these aren't clean enough, then uh, it can cause an issue. Now, one other detail that we see sometimes, not that often, is if the display mount is too tight or if the handlebars are an odd shape, it can create a bit of a bowing effect of this display mount, causing these contacts to not connect so well. Uh, now, one thing to note is that this display mount should be able to rotate a little bit. Actually, at the moment, this one's a little bit too tight, so we're just going to loosen it a little bit just to show you how that actually should be. Now, this uses a three millimeter Allen key, and there's, a, there's four bolt holes underneath here. So, um, we're just going to stick the tool in here. I'm just going to loosen this up just a little bit. And it should be just loose enough that you're able to rotate this with, with kind of minimal force. Um, now you don't want it too loose because you don't want these bolts to fall out or anything like that. But, or you don't want the display holder to be kind of flopping around. But you want it loose enough that you can move it like so. And that will allow you to also adjust the display for glare. So if you're riding along in the the sun is uh, hitting that directly. If you want it to rotate it a little bit, that will help. This will also help eliminate that bowing effect if the display mount is not connected that, there that well. Now, it could be possible that you, know, you encounter all these things and um, it could be possible that the, that the part is faulty. Uh, it's difficult to diagnose that exactly, but um, that might be something that the shop is required to do but you're able to really figure out a lot of these things on your own, which is, which is really nice. Now, the, one other reason why you might find that the display is not turning on is that the internal battery inside the display is dead. Now, you can tell that this is the case. If you go to turn the display on, it doesn't come on. So if I push the button, display doesn't turn on and you don't really know what to do. One thing you could do is if you happen to have another display or you're at a shop and you, you have another display, you can swap the display, try it out on there, see if that works. But you might not have that. And uh, one way that you can really diagnose if it's the display specifically is to actually turn the bike on from the battery. Now this particular bike has the down tube mounted battery. So I'm gonna go down to this down tube mounted battery 
And uh, we're just going to uh, come around to this other side and see where we can turn the display on from the battery. So I'm just going to hit this, this little power button here. And you can see the battery turns on. And if we come up to the display, you can see that the display is on now. So if that solves the issue, you might be able to resolve this in a variety of different ways. One, you might be able to just have the bike on for a while. It might not, the display might not have been connected to the bike, so it's not able to charge from the bike's external battery, because that's actually how the display gets its charge. Alternatively, you can actually take the display off the bike and plug it into a power source similar to uh, a phone or something like that. So you have this micro USB port here and you can plug into this micro USB and plug this into a wall or plug it into a computer, any sort of source of power. And generally I'd say like leave it there overnight or something like that to really get it all fully juiced up. Now the one thing to note, technically it's not possible to replace the internal battery in this display. Um, I think there have been people that have done it, but it's not advisable by Bosch. If the bike is under warranty and you have this issue and you're not able to resolve it after charging the display, then the, the display would be replaced under warranty. Um, so that's, that's a good thing to note. So I wanted to recreate the issue of the Kiox display not being fully seated. And you can tell that it's not seated when you turn the display on and the screens that you're gonna get through are just gonna be this cycling through. And the idea is that when the display is off the bike, you can get all this information about your bike or what you uh, previously had read. Now, recently this was reset, so it doesn't have any of these details, but if it was not reset, you would have these details showing up. Now, to seat the display, I'm just gonna turn it off for a second and you can see actually, if I'm kind of playing with this, it's there, but it's not actually connected. It's magnetic, so I'm just gonna, uh, generally what I do is put the bottom in first and then drop it in. And now it's fully seated in there. I'm just gonna hit the power button and you should see similar readings, which you'll find on the Intuvia display. You get that 0.0, .0 miles per hour. That means that this is connected to the motor system and you're able to cycle through the assist levels by just hitting the plus button here. So now we, we know that it's, it's functioning correctly. So the next common issue I'd like to show you is when this thumb pad, you're not able to select the assist levels or it's just not interacting with the display. So if I turn the display on and I can see now that it has this 0.0, .0 and, and it's connected to the bike, we've kind of resolve that it's not an issue where it's not connected because this will also make this thumb pad not connect properly. Um, so if you have the issue where you're trying to, to go up and down to the assist levels but you don't have the 0.0, .0 uh, it's, it's not connected so that's not the issue. This issue, what I wanted to describe is it's connected but you're pushing that plus button and it's actually not changing here. In that case, uh, I would say that more than likely this thumb pad is actually damaged or not working somehow. Fortunately, to resolve this, it's not that complex and you just swap this unit out. Uh, it could be something that if there was something, um, you know, kind of wedged in here or this plastic cap, technically it can come off and maybe it was like shifted somehow. I would not advise removing this. It's very difficult to remove it and not break it actually. It's not really so intended to be removed, but that could be the case. Um, but more than likely in our experience, you know, you might have an issue with this. Maybe it um, got submerged in water. Um, it, it can handle rain and that sort of thing, but maybe some, you know, had some salt water for extended period, who knows. Basically, I would, I would swap this out. So to swap this out, it's, it's underneath the display mount here, which we can show you. It's just uh, these, these four very small screws. So if you were to have this issue, you could potentially swap this, uh, this unit out and that should resolve it. 
Now this is going to be a similar thing with the Kiox display as well, uh, as well as the, the smartphone hub. I mean the smartphone hub's relatively new for us, we're not seeing that as much, but that's, uh, that's how that goes. So the next issue I wanted to show is when you're pedaling the bike along and you're not getting any speedometer reading, or you might get an error on the display that says 503 error. And that's generally because the speed sensor is not lined up. So I'm just gonna simulate this in the stand. So I'm gonna pedal the bike. And if I'm pedaling along, you can see that the the display, even though the wheel is moving, you're getting 0.0. .0. So the issue we're encountering here is that the speed magnet, which is attached to the spoke, is not aligned with the speed sensor, which is attached to the bike. Now, this magnet should be lining up with this sensor, but there's actually a point right here, there's a little indentation on the sensor and that's where the magnet should be lined up. A lot of times people think that the magnet should be lined up here, but this is just the attachment screw to attach the sensor to the chainstay. So we're gonna move this back into the correct position and when we can see that it's actually resolved. The more common issue that you're probably gonna encounter is that the sensor is probably just gonna be shifted maybe to the side or something like that, but I just wanted to, so, you know, sometimes maybe uh, you might get a stick in here or something like that. The magnet should, it can be kind of pushed around or something like that. It might not read exactly that way, so it might just be a matter of kind of shifting it back into position. Um, so I'm gonna put it back into position here, line it up with that sensor, and then I'm just gonna tighten it in place and we'll just check to see that it's working here. So that's, that's going there. And you can see I'm actually, I'm not rotating around. This is one way that you can actually test. I'm just going back and forth over the sensor. It's giving the impression that it's going really fast, but um, that's, that's really, it's showing that it's reading and that's, that's really all that you need at that point. So another common thing that comes up and doesn't come up as much with our bikes, but if you turn the display on, you might have this little wrench that comes up and it says service. A lot of people are really alarmed by that and thinking that it's kind of like a check engine light or something like that, but it's actually more like a service reminder in an automobile. So it's kind of telling you that you know, you should bring your bike in for service. Now this is something that's done on the shop level before they turn the bike over to you. So a shop might program in here, you know, we want you to get a 500 mile checkup or a 5,000 mile checkup or whatever the case may be. And they can program in these service intervals and it will give you this reminder and it will just basically show that, that little uh, wrench and say service, which as I said, it, it really uh, doesn't impact the function of the bike. It's just to give you a little reminder, hey, you know, uh, it's, it's time for you to check this out. Now, it's really at the shop's discretion of whether or not they want to use this service reminder. We usually don't use this because not everybody always has access to the shop because that's the only way that you can actually turn this off is to bring it into a shop. They need to hook it up to the diagnostic software and turn that uh, service reminder off or set it to a future odometer reading. Now I wanted to show one other scenario where the display won't turn on and this time it's actually gonna be the power pack. So we're gonna turn this on and you'll see we don't get the 0.0 .0 so we know it's not connecting to the drive unit and so our next solution, we know that this is fully seated on here, that's correct. So usually we'd go down here and try to turn it on from the power pack, but we actually have a bad power pack on here, so we're gonna show you what that looks like. If we hit this power button, you see actually no lights are lighting up here, and it's not turning the bike on. So at this point, we've determined that this uh, power pack is actually no good. Now if you come down here, we're gonna hit the power button on the power pack, and we'll see none of these lights turn on, and if these lights turn on, it's definitely not going to send power up to the display to turn the bike on. So we're starting to be led to believe that the power pack is actually the issue. 
uh, we can try and charge the battery for a while. If we already know that it's been on the charger, uh, we can try a different charger. But usually it would have at least one or two bars or throw some sort of uh, sequence of lights here. Since we have no lights lighting up here, it's leading to me, me to believe that there might be a little bit more going on here. But we could try and charge it and that sort of thing. But ultimately, if you come to the point where it's not lighting up at all, there's probably something else going on. There's one other thing you can do if you're having an issue with the power pack, it's not turning on. Maybe it's, uh, it's showing a different sequence of lights, like every other light, uh, as opposed to just the individual lights in sequence, which would indicate what the charge is on the battery. That might indicate that there's some sort of internal issue with the power pack. And what we generally recommend at that point is to do a hard reset of the battery. Now to do a hard reset, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it off here. So I'm just gonna grab the key and unlock the battery. And now they have this off. I'm gonna hold the battery on off button down for 10 seconds. So hold that down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And nothing really happened. We'll try to turn it on again. Nothing's happening there. As I said, I already know that this is a faulty battery. It doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen sometimes. And at that point, this would need to be swapped out from uh, an authorized Bosch dealer. So we'll put the regular power pack back on just to see that this is all working correctly. And this is a, a nice thing too, like if you do happen to have another power pack, um, you can actually, uh, you can, turn the bike on or, you know, test if, if, you know, swapping those parts is a good way to, to actually diagnose where the issue is, is coming from. And a lot of times that might be, be something that we do in the shop. Say if we have an issue with the display, we're not able to really get to the bottom of it. We put another display on, the bike works. We're, we're led to believe that the display is the issue. Maybe we're starting to believe that maybe the display mount is the issue and we can wire in a new display mount try that out. So it's not always so easy to test the specific electronics on their own, but uh, generally what we do is just try and swap them out. That's what we do in the shop. I know that that's not always so easy to do at home, but, uh, and really I wanted this video to kind of cater more to these quick fixes, but, uh, but that's, that's how you would uh, kind of figure out if the, the battery has an issue. Ultimately, you might need to connect with the shop to further diagnose the system. So I wanted to show one other issue that happens exclusively with the Purion display and we've you know, made our best attempt at recreating it where we actually remove the batteries from the Purion display. So the bike will still work, but it's not gonna be able to perform all functions. So if we go to turn it on, this will also happen if the internal batteries of the Purion display are dead. If we go to turn it on, we're hitting that power button and it's not working. And keep in mind, you just have to tap the power button. You shouldn't have to hold it for any extended period. But again, it's not turning on. And we can try the next step, similar to what we did with the Intuvia display, is go down to the power pack on this bike. And we're just going to hit that power button. You see all these lights light up. And if we come back up to the display, we see the display is on. And it actually is able to perform most functions. It's able to go up and down the assist levels. The walk assist is able to function. However, we're not able to turn it on or off from the display. So that, uh, that function does actually require some electricity, I guess, from the display, and that's what those internal batteries really function for. So we're not able to turn it on or off. Uh, that's leading us to believe that something's going on with the display itself. Like everything else is functioning as it should, but the display itself is, is not functioning properly. So we'll just show, um, I, I'm gonna pull this off. This, is, this takes a three millimeter Allen key to right under here. And we'll just open this screw up and pull this off. I'll show you what's going on under here. So you can take this off. This is where the, uh, the batteries go. It's the, uh, number two, CR2016. You can use a little coin. Uh, right here I'm using this uh, flathead screwdriver. It's pretty easy to open it up with the screwdriver, so just 
open that up, and you see in here, we actually don't have the, the battery. It's gonna take two of these uh, 2016 batteries. Now, I should note, these, uh, these batteries are unique to Bosch. You know, they have pretty tight tolerances for their, uh, the, the electronics here. So my recommendation is getting the Bosch specific ones or potentially getting these Maxell uh, CR2016 three volt batteries. So we're gonna put two of them in. Both of them are gonna have the, the plus sign facing up, minus down. And we can put this, uh, this right back in to kind of seat it back in place. And we're gonna twist this clockwise to, to seat it there. And it doesn't take much to, to put it back in place there, but if we see, you can hit the power button now, and you can see it turns on. Now, with this issue, if the batteries internally are dead or going dead, you might see an error come up on here, but it's the same basic concept, and it's a matter of swapping those, um, those internal batteries. So that's how that works, and I just wanted to show you. So next I wanted to talk about things that you might encounter specific to the motor system. Uh, some issues which might happen are, one, you might find that the motor is kind of like rocking a little bit. That could mean that the motor mounts are maybe a little bit loose. And you'll experience that if you're pedaling and you feel like your pedals are kind of shifting under you a little bit. And there's, there's three mounting bolts underneath the motor cover where the motor is mounted to the frame of the bike. That might, might also produce a certain noise in the, the system. You might hear kind of a creaking noise. It could be, uh, it could also manifest in more of like a popping noise. Um, and that's one potential uh, thing that you might encounter. The challenge there is that quite often you need to remove several parts of the motor uh, cover to uh, get to those bolts. So you might have to have a shop do that. Uh, if you're really handy, maybe you can do that or, you know, if, um, or someone can help you or something like that. So it's something to consider. Most of the issues that you're going to encounter relating to the motor might be noises and those are kind of a bit difficult to diagnose exactly, but, um, but it's something to, you know, maybe you could think about these different uh, things and um, certainly, you know, reach out to the shop or, you know, leave something in the comments and, or if you have like your own little video, if you want to send it. I mean, for us right now, we try to focus primarily on supporting our own customers, but you know, we try to help out when we can. So, you know, you have that where the motor mounts might be loose. You might have other issues where it could be actually like the drivetrain, but you might think that it's the motor. So for example, you could have issues where the chain and the cassette or, or maybe um, the sprocket is somehow making some noise, how the chain is interacting with it. So you might think that that's the motor, or this happens a lot specifically with internally geared hubs, where the internal hub might be making some noise, but it might resonate through the drivetrain towards the motor. And when you're riding it, you hear something you're like, hey, this is funny. Um, especially maybe a bike with a belt, the belt could be too tight, or maybe it could be too loose. Those things could create these noises, and it might not necessarily be the motor specifically, but something to consider there. Uh, some other issues that we've seen with the, the Bosch motor to specifically make noises, it's pretty rare, um, but actually happens on some older generations of motors where they actually have a bearing noise. And that could be a matter of uh, maybe there could be something, uh, some sort of dirt stuck in between the drive shaft of the motor and the bearings, uh, which could be cleaned but it could be possible if the motor has a lot of age or a lot of wear, maybe it was ridden in the water a lot. Uh, the motor is water resistant, but it's not really made to be power washed or that sort of thing. So you could have issues where there's like water ingress could potentially create issues inside uh, those bearings. And there is a way to service that, but it's, um, it's a bit complex and you're probably gonna wanna work with the, with the uh, dealer to to do so. Um, some other things you might encounter with the motor, and keep in mind, you know, I'm just, I'm kind of drawing out, out like all these things that I've seen over the years, not necessarily common issues, but 
Um, it's, it's things that might happen. Most of the issues that we encounter are more related to the display, kind of simpler electronic issues. The motor is one thing that, uh, in my experience, it, it fails very rarely. I mean, we've sold uh, over a thousand bikes with the Bosch system and really a very small amount of, of motor specific issues, aside from maybe on the early on, some of the manufacturers were not uh, torquing the motor mounting bolts correctly and that might create that issue which I described before. Um, but outside of that, uh, yeah, there's not too much else going on there. Um, but the one challenge is that quite often is if, if it is an internal motor system issue, generally that's something you're gonna have to work with the shop specifically. And a lot of times, you know, if, if you have some of these other issues, maybe you wanna work with the shop and that's totally cool, but I think a lot of people really appreciate the ability to be able to resolve some of these issues quickly on their own, especially you might be out on the road and uh, if you're, you lose power for some reason and it's a quick fix, to get yourself back on the road, it's, it's a great way to go. So we went through a lot of the different errors and issues that you might encounter with the Bosch system. It's certainly not a full comprehensive list, but I try to go with some of the more common ones that we've seen over the years. And the other thing I should note is that the Bosch system does have a pretty advanced error reporting system. So there's uh, errors that, which might show up on the screen and I actually plan to do a separate video discussing all those errors and what they actually mean. But there's uh, more information you can actually gather from the drivetrain or the drive system, I should say, when it's plugged into a diagnostic system. Now this does have to happen at a dealer. Through this diagnostic report, you can get all sorts of information about the system, how it's operated, if it's got any errors internally that might not necessarily show up on the display, if there's any parameters which are off, and we can use this information, we can actually communicate that information to Bosch. We can provide that information to you as a dealer to the end consumer so you can get some details about your bike and how it's working and how you're using it. So that's the diagnostic system. As I said, I'm gonna you know, create another video about the error codes, but you know, I hope this video was helpful overall. Certainly if you have any issues you, you've encountered and you wanna leave them in the comments below, uh, you know, put them there, I'm always happy to help. I try and answer the comments pretty quickly. Sometimes it can get a bit overwhelming at times, but I'm you know, really trying to stay on top of that. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, reach out. Uh, we'll be happy to help the best that we can. As I said before, we really try to focus primarily on working with our own customers, but if you leave uh, something in the comments, maybe we'll be able to answer, or maybe even somebody else has had that issue and they'll be able to answer that, that question as well. So um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in a future video and uh, we'll see you soon.